Good morning students. In this video, we are going to see about IP security policy, Internet Protocol security policy. Let us see what the security policy is. A fundamentals to this operation of Internet Protocol security is the concept of a security policy applied to each IP packets that transits from a source to destination. IP policy is determined primarily by the interaction of two databases the security association database and the security policy database. This section provides an overview of these two databases and then summarizes their use during IP security operations. The figure illustrates the architecture of IP security linking with the database towards the protocol. The security policy database and the security association database both are going to link with the two protocols of Internet Exchange Protocol version 2 and Internet Protocol Security version 3, which is which the architecture shows the source and destination connection with this particular policy database and association database. Let us see about the association, how the security associations are going to be get created with the protocol and the database from the source to destination shall be discussed about this as a security association. A key concept that appears in both the authentication and confidentiality mechanism for IP is the security association. An association is a one-way logical connection between a sender and a receiver that affords security services to the traffic carried on it. If a peer relationship is needed for two-way secure exchange, then two security associations are required. A security association is uniquely identified by three parameters. We will see one by one. A one-way relationship between a sender and receiver that affords security for the traffic flow, which is defined by three parameters as security parameter index, IP destination address, security protocol identifier. Apart from the security association has a number of other parameters as security as sequence number, authentication header and encapsulation header information, lifetime, etc. Also have a database of security associations. Let us discuss security association in detail. A security association is uniquely identified by three parameters. Security parameter index, SPI, is a 32-bit unsigned integer assigned to this security association and having a local significance only. This SPI is carried in AH and ESP headers to enable the receiving system to select the security association under which a received packet will be processed. Next, IP destination address. This is the address of the destination endpoint of the security association, which may be end user system or a network system such as a firewall or a router. The third one, the third parameter, security protocol identifier. Uh, this field forms the outer IP header, indicates whether the association is an authentication header or encapsulation header, payload, security association. Hence, in any IP packet, the security association is uniquely identified by the destination address in the IPv4 or IPv6 header and the SPI in this enclosed extension header as EIH or ESP. The security associations are going to be get present in a database called as SAD security association database. In each IP security implementations, there is a nominal security association database that defines the parameter associated with each security associations. A security association is normally defined by a parameters. We will see how this is going to be happen. A security association normally defined by the parameters in an SAD entry, a security parameter index, a 32 bit value selected by receiving end of an security association to uniquely identify the SA. In an SAD entry for an unbound SA, 
the SPI is used to construct the packets H or ESP header. In a SAD entry for an inbound SA, the SPI is used to map traffic to the appropriate SA. The next parameter, sequence number counter. It's also a 32-bit value which is used to generate the sequence number field in an authentication header or encapsulation payload, payload header. Third, sequence counter overflow. A flag indicates whether overflow of the sequence number counter should generate an auditable event and prevent further transmission of packets on the security association, which is required for all the implementations. Fourth, anti-replay window. Uh, this anti-replay window is used to determine whether an inbound authentication header or encapsulated payload packet is a replay, which is also required for all the implementations. The next parameter and authentication header information and encapsulation payload information. An authentication algorithm keys key lifetime and related parameters being used with authentication implementation. ESP informations like encryption and authentication algorithms, keys, initialization value, key lifetime and related parameters being used with ESP for the ESP implementations. The next parameter, lifetime for the security association. A time interval or byte count after which an SA must be replaced with a new association or terminator plus an indication of which of this action should occur. It's also very important for all the implementations. Next parameter IP security protocol mode which defines which mode of operation is going to be happen in that. It may be a tunnel mode or a transport mode or wildcard. The last parameter path MTU. Any observer path maximum transmission unit which is a maximum size of a packet that can be transmitted without fragmentation and aging variables which is also required for all the implementation. The key management mechanism uh, that is used to distribute keys is coupled to the authentication and privacy mechanism only by way of the security parameter index. Hence, authentication and privacy have been specified independent of any specific key management mechanism. The IP security provides the user with considerable flexibility in the way in which IP sector services are applied to IP traffic. As we are going to see, SCS can be obtained or combined with a number of ways to yield the desired user configuration. Security policy database. The means by which IP traffic is related to the specific security associations is the nominal specific or security policy database. In its simplest form, a security policy database contains entries, each of which defines a subset of IP traffic and points to an security association for the traffic. In more complex environments, there may be multiple entries that potentially relate to a single security association or multiple security associations associated with a single SDP entry. The reader is referred to the relevant IP security documents for a full discussion. Each security policy database entry is defined by a set of internet protocol and upper layer protocol field values called selectors. In effect, these selectors are used to filter outgoing traffic in order to map it into a particular security association. Outbound processing obeys the following general sequence for each IP packet. Compare the value of this appropriate fields in the packet, the selector fields against the SDP to find a matching SDP entry, which will point to zero or more essays. Determine essays, if any, for this packet and its associated SPI. Uh, do the required IP security processing, that is AH or ESP processing. 
Security Policy Database relates IP traffic to a specific SES. A match subset of IP traffic to relevant security association. Use selectors to filter outgoing traffic to map based on local and remote IP addresses. A next layer protocol name a local and remote protocols. The following selectors determines an SDP entry, a remote IP address. This may be a single IP address, an emirated list or a range of addresses or a wildcard address, which is a masked address. The later two are required to support more than one destination system sharing the same security association. Example, behind a firewall. Uh, similar to that, a uh, local IP addresses this may be a single IP address, an enumerated list or a range of addresses, a wildcard address, a masked address. Other little two are required to support more than one source system sharing the same security association. Example, behind a firewall. Third one, next layer protocol. The IP protocol header IPv4 or IPv6 or IPv6 extension includes a field, a protocol for IPv4 a next header for IPv6 or IPv6 extension that designates the protocol operating over internet protocol. This is an individual protocol number ANY or for IPv6 only. APAC if H or ESP is used uh, then this IP protocol header immediately precedes the AH or ESP header in this packet. Next name. A user identifier from the operating system. Uh, this is not a field in IP or upper layer headers but is available in IP security and it's running on the same operating system as the user. Next one, a local and remote ports. Uh, this may be individual TCP or UDP port values and enumerated list of ports are a master ports. This table reflects the following configuration. A local network configuration consists of two networks, the basic corporate network configuration as the IP network number as 1.2.3.0-24. The local configuration also includes a secure LAN often known as demilitarization zone that is identified as a 1.2.4.0-24. Demilitarization zone is protected from both the sites, a world and the rest of the corporate land by firewalls. The host in this example has the IP address 1.2.3.10 and it is authorized to connect to the server 1.2.4.10 in the demilitarized zone. The entries in this SPD should be self-explanatory. For example, UDP port 500 is the designated port of internet key exchange. Any traffic from the local host to a remote host for purposes of an internet key exchange bypasses the IP security processing. It's an example of an SPD entry. IP traffic processing, the IP security is executed on a packet by packet basis. When the IP security is implemented, each outbound IP packet is processed by the IP, sec IP security logic before transmission and each inbound IP packet is processed by the IP security logic after reception and before passing the packet content onto the next layer, next higher layer. We look at this two situations in detail. IP traffic processing outbound pack outbound packet IP security searches the SDP for a match to this packet outbound IP packets from TCP or UDP which search security policy databases if no match is found then the packet is discarded and an error message is generated. If a match is found, 
further processing is determined by the first matching entry in the SPD. If the policy for this packet is discarded, then the packet is discarded. If the policy is bypass, then there is no further IP security processing. The packet is forwarded to the network for transmission. If the policy is protected, then a search is made for the SAD for a matching entry, security association database for a matching entry. If no entry is found, then the internet key exchange is invoked to create a security association with the appropriate keys and an entry is made in the security association for the future reference. If the matching entry is in the SAD determines, the processing for this packet, encryption, authentication or both can be performed. The IP traffic processing inbound packets. When a packet enters from the internet into the inbound IP packet, it determines whether it's an IP secured packets or IP unsecured packets. If unsecured IP packets are received, it search for the security policy database for the match to this packet. If matching entry as a policy of bypass, then the IP packet will be processed and stripped off and delivered for the higher layer, example TCP or UDP. If no matching entry has been found from this security policy database, then the IP packet will be discarded. For the secured packet, IP security searches the security association database. If no match is found, then the IP packet is going to be discarded. If matching entry as appropriate, then it executes the ESP or AH processing and it delivers to higher layer example TCP and EDP. So in this video we come across with an IP security policy and our architecture, IP security associations and security association database, policy database, IP traffic processing in that functions of our operations of outbound IP packets and operations of inbound IP packets. If you have any queries, please post the queries to me. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you.